Hi, my name is Savion Scott, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about a local artifact born and raised right here in Albany, New York by the name of Oni. I'm going to read you a book on Oni titled A Lucky Dog Oni U.S. Rail Mail Mascot by Dirk Wales, as well as a postcard on Oni. Oni, he was the railway mail service mascot. He traveled 143 miles and received 1,017 medals. One day in 1888, a stray dog was befriended by the clerks in the Albany, New York post office. As he had no owner, they called him Oni. After a few trips in railway mail cars, Oni was given a collar with his name and address and a card asking other clerks to attach the names of places he visited. His collar became loaded with tags, medals, inscriptions, and baggage checks from all over the country. These got so heavy that Postmaster General John Wanamaker ordered a harness made for Oni to carry them. He returned from Mexico with a silver peso. After a trip to Alaska, in 1895, Oni sailed from Tacoma for Japan, where he was given a medal by the emperor. He went through the Suez Canal to New York and in five days more was back in Tacoma, having been around the world in 132 days. Unfortunately, Oni was shot in 1897 by order of the postmaster at Toldo, Ohio who did not know his identity. His body was mounted and sent to the Smithsonian Institution. It was shown at the exposition at Philadelphia in 1926, where it attracted much attention as the only dog ever adopted by the Postal Service. And this image here is Tony as a taxidermy at the Smithsonian Institute. And now I'm going to read A Lucky Dog Oni U.S. Rail Mail Mascot by Dirk Wills, illustrated by Diane Kenna. And this, this map is the official Matthews, Northrop, and Co.'s official railway map of the United States in 1890. And all of these red dots are places the rail mail train traveled to deliver mail. Nameless and homeless, the small dog shivered in gloom. He was cold and soaking wet. The river was up, and in the darkness, he had fallen into the shadows. It was a bad night in Albany, New York. Here was a lucky find, a space out of the weather. The dog wandered about the piles of gray bags. What could they be? Whatever they were, they smelled good and the room was warm. Hey, Owen, what have we got here? asked James. It's a cute little puppy, Owen replied. Boy, it was cold last night. Guess it was lucky the back door wasn't shut. Owen looked around to see if any of the supervisors were near. It was against the rules to have animals in the post office. The supervisor heard about the dog the men were keeping. He came to investigate, asking why the dog was in the post office. James replied, It's Owen's dog, sir. He's a cute one. The supervisor noted the pup's plaintive look, and in response, the dog wagged his tail. Won't do any harm to keep him, sir, said Owen. He seems to love the mailbags, and he just needs a place to stay. And some friends, said James.
So time went on, and it got colder and then warmer, but the dog still had a home in the post office. He had a name, too, Oni, for Owen's dog. He was allowed to go everywhere the postal workers went, and one day, while watching them load a rail car with mailbags, he jumped in. Wind whipped his ears, new smells filled his nose. They were going so fast. Gosh, thought Oni, this was much better than riding the mail wagons all the time. 142 miles to New York City and 142 miles back to Albany. That was a long way in 1889. What a lucky dog. Say, how old are you, Oni? asked Carl, the rail car supervisor. Because this is a true story. Some of the questions are hard to answer. No one really knows. Patting the dog, Horace said, he don't know. Just an orphan dog that crept into the post office one day and now gets to ride all the mail trains, eh, Oni? Lucky dog, said Carl. Oni had adventures at home, too. One day, everyone thought he was missing. The, the mail clerks unloading the mail expected Oni to be on the wagon because he was always so responsible and dependable. He was always where he was supposed to be. To make things worse, there was a missing mail bag, too. A double mystery. Blocks away from the post office, Oni and the lost mail pouch were found. The pouch had fallen off the wagon and Oni had stayed behind. Someone had to protect the mail. You know, little friend, I was really worried about you, said Owen. You may be a hero now, but you had scared me there. It wasn't long before Oni's mail train adventures took him farther and farther away from his home station of Albany. And during this time, an interesting thing happened. Everywhere he went, a note was pinned to his collar asking employees of the railway mail service to attach a special bagging tag of leather or metal to Oni's collar to show where he had been traveling. Very soon, he had an impressive collection of tags and he had many new friends. New friends like Winoma Kilbridge of the Los Angeles Kennel Club, who gave him a medal for being the best traveled dog of 1893, and Walter Banning of the Grand Rapids, Michigan Dog Show, who gave Oni a special medal. Sissy Donahue, daughter of the president of the Pacific Kennel Club, gave Oni an inscribed half dollar and a special hug. In Chicago, Mr. William Winter Wagner gave Oni a Globetrotter medal. Little did Mr. W. W. Wagner know that this medal would represent a part of Oni's future. Finally, Oni met the Postmaster General John Wanamaker, who made a long speech about how Oni was now the official mascot of the rail mail service. He presented Oni with a special jacket to carry his many awards and baggage tags. Oni and his friends at the Albany Post Office learned that foreign travel could have its dangers. On a trip to Canada, Oni followed the mailbags in the post office in Montreal and was seized for not having a Canadian dog license. When his friends in Albany learned of Oni's capture, they raised the $2.50 it would take to get Oni released and sent back to the United States. Close call, Oni. Oni was famous now. He had traveled all over the United States, and many people were thinking he might be the first postal service dog to go around the world. 
His friend Owen was worried. What if something happened to Oni in a faraway place and Oni couldn't get there to help him? And Owen couldn't get there to help him. Still, one sunny morning in August, Oni boarded a ship and began the adventure of his life. Wearing his bagging tag collection, wearing his bagging tag collection, with a tiny suitcase containing a soft sleeping blanket, comb, and brush, and was greeted at home by hundreds of admirers, gained six pounds, 132 days around the world, made scores of new friends, traveled over 143 miles by steamship and train, and was issued a Japanese imperial passport. A dog with Oni's fame and accomplishments could become, well, big-headed from all the attention, but Oni's idea of a good time was simply hopping the next mail train. Looking out the door of the mail car, his nose filled with scents and whiskers blowing in the breeze, he watched the countryside fly by. The train thundered along past small towns with a shack, with a shack and a single hook to catch the mailbag and then on to the bustle of big stations like Albany in New York City. Not a bad life for a lucky and adventurous dog. During his life, Oni was a, a living good luck charm. When Oni was riding the rails between 1888 and 1897, Accidents were common on mail trains. In 1893, there were more than 400 train derailments, explosions, collisions, and loss of lives. Lives of mail train employees. During all the Oni, during all the time Oni rode the rails, no train he was on had an accident, nor was there a single, nor was there a loss of a single rail mail employee. Oni was in more ways than one, a lucky dog.